a couple of years ago I started designing my own CNC machine and it is now time for me to build it. It's based around a granite surface plate and uses a couple of other granite components as well. Uh, the reason I chose granite is because it has great vibration dampening properties and it's also rock solid. In this video I will start making the base of the machine. Now the base of the machine consists of three big granite uh, blocks. The most important of them is a granite surface plate. This surface plate is important for a number of reasons. It gives me a good surface to work uh, on when the machine is built, but it also aids me in building this machine as precise as possible without any advanced tooling. Uh, these, the surface plate is going to be my reference for basically all the crucial measurements uh, in the machine. Bolted onto the surface plate are two granite sides. These will provide a raised mounting position for the y-axis linear rails and ball screws. Mounting these sides parallel to the surface plate is absolutely crucial. If they are not parallel, the y-axis will not be parallel either, and that's a big problem. Therefore, I'm going to start by grinding the top surface of these sides parallel with the surface plate. So what I've done here is uh, I've measured uh, the uh, top surface here and I've realized that this this stone is not perfectly flat it's it's about let's call this this is the lowest spot at the end here I'll call this zero and if I run up here closer to the camera the closer I get the uh, the error is starting to creep up about one quarter of a way down it's uh, 0.3 millimeters higher than at the end over here and then it stays pretty consistent all the way to this end so it's it's 0.3 almost all the way which is a bummer because I, I need to take off 0.3 to make everything level um, to speed up this I'm going to make a relief cut. I actually don't need the full width of this stone. It's about 100 millimeters wide and I only need about 40 to 50 millimeters to be able to put the linear rails because it's slightly offset um, from the center. This is a diamond grinding wheel for angle grinders and I'm using it in a impact drill instead. Uh, I think it's going to be fine. Uh, this is used to polish uh, concrete floors with angle grinders, I think. Uh, and I think it's going to do just a fine job with with the um, uh, with the granite as well. It's reasonably flat now. There are some low spots, uh, not very big, but there are some, some of them. And that's when I, I realized that I actually, originally I was thinking I'm going to bring this surface into parallel with the table. But I'm actually more interested in the top of the carriage on the linear rail that's going to sit here that that carriage is parallel to the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, now mark and drill the holes for the linear rails and then I can use the rail and the carriage uh, to take measurements for where I need to remove material on this surface.
Okay, so the granite sides are just about done. There are some minor things I still need to fix before I can mount them to the uh, surface plate, but they are now parallel to within plus minus five microns across the whole length of the uh, rail where the rail is going to be mounted. Um, as you can see, I did not polish this relief uh, cut zone or whatever. Um, this is because I I don't have to polish this. There's no reason for me to do it. The, o the only reason would be aesthetical and it's going to be covered anyway later. So I'm saving myself the, the time and effort to polish this and moving on to more important stuff instead. I ran into a big problem. I bought these brass inserts to fasten basically anything that I need to fasten in, in the granite. These specific ones are M5, they were meant to be used with the linear rails, to, to fasten the linear rails. The issue is they don't work, they don't hold enough torque, I can't, can't torque down on them enough. Um, and they let go or they break and they simply don't do the job. So uh, instead I tried gluing these in, instead of relying on the uh, expansion um, function of these inserts. I glued them in with a generic epoxy. That didn't work. So now I'm looking for other options. My idea is I have another kind of glue, or it's actually an a, um, injectable mortar. Uh, used for um, for fixing bolts into granite or concrete. The issue with that mortar is that it needs surface area on the outside of whatever you're putting in uh, to grip onto. And as you can see these have a tiny bit of knurling, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Uh, so I got this. This is a threaded insert for use in wood. It has a wood thread on the outside, uh, in this case an M5 thread on the inside. Um, and the wood thread being large as it is, should provide a lot of surface for this injectable mortar to grab onto. So I am going to test this out in a test rock. So I went into my backyard and I found this precision ground uh, rock. Uh, it's perfect in every way, it has these pre-drilled holes and everything, it's just nature really made this rock for... for exactly this purpose. So I'm going to glue the inserts in here and we're going to see if we can get some results on which one is strongest. So the glue is now dry and I will remove these screws and then use a hammer to knock off the excess, excess uh, glue here uh, because I need to be able to put a, uh, a piece of flat bar up against it to try the uh, torque. <laughs> Okay, so I'll begin with the brass insert. I'm just going to use this flat bar here. Uh, I drilled a 5mm hole for the screw and then I'm just going to screw it in and see. As soon as I get resistance here I'm going to stop and change to the torque wrench. 5 newtons. Six. Eight. Nine. 
there you go. Spinning freely now. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Here's, here's ten. Maybe not. No, ten broke it. Spinning freely now. Yeah. And actually, what's. Oh my, that's impressive. I don't know if you can see this, but it's actually the rock that's broken. When I pulled it out here, I, I got more rock with me, with the insert as well as uh, the glue. So you can see here, it's, it's like this big piece of rock shard with the insert here. Uh, that's pretty impressive in regards to the, to the glue or the anchor mass here. Okay, I'm gonna gonna try the other inch set as well. This this uh, stone is probably way more porous than the uh, uh, stone, the granite I use in the CNC as well. That's seven. Nine. That's 11. Let's see, can it do 12? Yeah, it's cracking. No, no, there it is. It's spinning now. Sadly, I don't have any good video of me mounting the sides to the surface plate, but I thought I'd go through the most important step of the mounting process. I said earlier I need the top of the surf of the um, sides to be parallel to the surface plate. To achieve this, I use a test indicator. I ran it along the length of the uh, um, sides, and that would give me an indication if the side is tilted backward or forward. Uh, I would then shim underneath the lowest part of the side, and then take a new measurement and repeat until the measurement was zero. Uh, then I could bolt and glue the side onto the uh, edge of the surface plate and uh, then repeat the same process on the other side. I think this is a good place to stop this video. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the video and uh, if you have any questions write them in the comments. I will try and answer and I'll see you in the next video.